Hey, what's up everyone? In this video today, the point of it is going to be to teach you guys how to pull some more financial data, how to use some common financial API queries, uh, how to bring it all into Power BI and then put together some easy visualizations. Um, going to give you a nice little spread of data here. A publicly traded equity, we'll look at NVIDIA, uh, Bitcoin pricing, and then the front month Henry Hub natural gas futures and just have some very simple interactivity in our dashboard here. And it's all about teaching you guys uh, a very simple way to pull all this financial data in a repeatable and free way. So let's jump right in. So let's ground ourselves in what exactly we're doing, right? So our data source is a financial API. It's from a company called Alpha Vantage. They have a free and they have a premium version of what they offer. Everything in this video, as of this recording, is going to be entirely free. So no startup costs whatsoever to recreate exactly what we're doing. Of course, you can just skip to the end and download the template, which is linked right below as well. And it has all the same connections we're about to walk through. But an API, all it is, is a connection to a data source that is really simple, seamless, and allows us to essentially right click, refresh, pull new fresh data very, very quickly and a lot of data because it's formatted in, in such a good, simple way. We're not doing any um, export to Excel and then connect Power BI on top of that. We're not, we're not doing that. And what we're pulling are time series tables. So we'll have a, a date column and we'll be looking at stock prices with the high, the low, the close, and the open. So we can build that very commonly used candlestick chart. Alpha Vantage does offer cryptocurrency pricing as well, not just publicly traded equities. So I'll walk us through the Bitcoin daily price there. They do have an offering for real-time pricing, if that's something you're interested in. Um, we're just going to be using daily prices for simplicity in this video. And same concept with a lot of commodities. So we'll look at natural gas pricing as well. What's great about this approach and connecting to an API is everything is going to be housed in the Power BI file itself. It's really clean and it's compartmentalized. So let's learn a little bit more about the Alpha Vantage API and what's in there. So hop over into Google and just Google Alpha Vantage. It'll take you to their website, which you can see the URL up here above. Make sure you sign up just for a free API key, and this will get you an amount of queries that you're probably not going to max out. Of course, if you need more queries and you need more real time stuff, you can pay them for a subscription. But just that get free API key, you'll get your own API key. Um, you're not going to use use mine um, in this video, but that's very simple. It takes about five seconds. They have really great documentation for people watching this video that have never used an API as a data source before. Often the provider, in this case Alpha Vantage, they'll give you a lot of great information about um, how exactly to write your queries, what kind of parameters are needed when querying. And in this case, it's really well documented. I'm going to walk you through not every single one of these because that would be a pretty big waste of time, but you can walk through it on, on your own. Um, the first function we're going to use or the first call to data is called time series daily as you might expect this is bringing in daily prices and these parameters are what are required so one example is the symbol here so if we wanted to pull all the stock price data for apple we would put in apple's ticker as it's traded so aapl for nvidia which is the one we're using in this video we'll use nvidia's ticker Output size, data type, often API data requests come in the form of a JSON file. Just think of that as a, as a data structure. Um, and Power BI reads JSON files in very well, which we'll, we'll look at. Back here on the left, you can see all the other offerings. So daily adjusted prices. So adjusted includes things like stock splits or dividends. Um, this is actually part of their premium package. So um, it's not available if you're just using your free API key and everything we're doing in this video is uh, the free stuff. Weekly, monthly, here's an example of where you can get some real time pricing. You just feed it your stock ticker and it'll give you the current volume and current uh, price as it's being uh, traded at that very moment. And there's also a lot of other actual financials data. So fundamental data, kind of the stuff you'll see in a publicly traded company's 10K. 
I talked about uh, cryptocurrencies. There's also foreign exchange, if that's something you're interested in, commodities, and so on and so forth. I'm not going to go through every one of these, but this resource is if you are kind of going beyond the bounds of this video, you can come in here and find stuff that you're interested in. So let's hop over into our dashboard. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we are going to want to go into the Power Query Editor so that we can actually create the data query that's going to the Alpha Vantage API. So open up your Power Query Editor. In my case, I decided that I want to use a parameter to very quickly type in a ticker and then go ahead and get those stock prices. So to make a parameter, what you do is up here, click on New Parameter. And if you already have created parameters, you can see them in here. It'll give you an option to select the data type. In our case, it's text because a ticker is just a, a series of letters. You can name it, give it a description, and give it a current value. Just to show you how it changes, I'll type in Apple instead of NVIDIA. And you can also type it in here, and that is going to feed into it's essentially just establishing a variable, right? You can, you can use this parameter in all of your other queries that are going to wherever it is you're pointing to. Heading into the actual meat and potatoes of what we're doing, this may seem pretty intimidating to some of you. It's really not that complicated. We are establishing some variables such as the API key. In this case, this is my API key. I'm gonna change it after this video so you can't all jump on it and clog it all up and the URL to the Alpha Vantage API. If this is just way too intimidating, you can just download the template for free at the link below, but I'm gonna walk you through the whole thing and hopefully um, make it really clear for you guys. So this is uh, in your advanced editor, which is an option right here in the upper middle part. And it's probably just going to be easiest to um, copy paste some of this, this text or use the template. But when you're making a query to an API, you need your key. That's your unique identifier. It's kind of like your little password so that the Alpha Vantage API knows it's you. They can count how many times you're hitting their database to retrieve data. The API URL, this of course is going to alphavantage.com. We are querying the data through an API, which is through the internet. The function name, which is the same thing we just looked at on the Alpha Vantage uh, web documentation, so that time series daily, that's giving us the daily stock prices. Now, if you look at here, uh, it's not in quotations, the word ticker, that's because that's the parameter we just created. So it's actually reading that in as a variable, uh, NVIDIA, so it's gonna pull NVIDIA data. Output equals full, I'm not even gonna talk about that, full just means you're getting more data. Then I'm using the variables to establish a really long URL, right? Because we are querying through the internet. You're basically just going to feed your variables to the Alpha Vantage API, and it's going to pull back the JSON file with all of that data that we want. So I'm going to press done here, and I'm going to walk us backwards a little bit. So here is the actual full URL, right? So this is the actual code that we just looked at in the advanced editor. And this is the output of that code. It looks just like a website URL. So we want time series daily. We want NVIDIA. We want the full output size. And here's my API key. So Alpha Vantage knows I have a valid account with them and I'm pulling that free data. It comes in a JSON format, like I've said before. If you click this record button, what it does is it opens up that JSON and it, in Power BI, Power Query actually reads it in as uh, two columns and table values. So there's a button up here in the upper left, convert it into table. And just with a click of a button, Power BI knows it can turn that JSON into something that we're all probably more familiar with, which is table format. Over here, there's two arrows that are pointing away from each other. If you click that, you can see all of the columns of data that are coming through that API call. So your open, your high, your low, your close, your volume. Just expand those. 
And then we're gonna do some simple type changes because these are obviously decimal numbers, numerical. We want the date column to be date time so that uh, Power BI actually knows that it can read it as a date hierarchy and some simple renames. And just like that, this looks like something that you would pull from any normal database or if you're using Excel as a data source. So we're back into like our comfortable zone of data. This point, just close and apply. And let's have a look at how the data actually came in. So it's our stock table. And it's just like how we looked at it on the Power Query Editor. One thing I do want to point out is I do use a date table. And the reason I'm using a date table in this data model is because we are pulling those three time series data sets. And I just want to use one common date column in my visuals. So I've covered this before in many videos, but how do we create a date table? You can actually go into um, new table where it says write a DAX expression to create a new table. And this is that DAX expre expression. I'm using the DAX function calendar. I'm giving it a start date. I'm giving it an end date. So in this case, it's going all the way back 24 years ago to 2000. And it's given me a record for every day in between there. And then on my relationships tab, because each of my time series queries to the API comes back with a date column, that's what I'm related on. And I can use that date column for everything I'm trying to do. So first visual I'm making for our NVIDIA data is a candlestick chart. The candlestick chart is not native to the Microsoft visuals here. So you got to go into the ellipses here, get more visuals and type in candlestick here. And I'm using this candlestick by OKViz, okay so it's a third party visual, but I've had success with it. So make sure you click that and it'll give you an option to add it to your model. I already have it added in, but just click this add button. It'll show up there. And click that. We're gonna, let's move my head here. We're gonna put the date column down there on the X axis. And we are going to put, just line them up. Open goes with open, close with close. High, low. And we have some formatting to do here. There, are, You can actually see the little candles, but there's just a ton of data. And then the X and Y axis are a little messed up. So I will get that all cleaned up here. I did a little bit of cleanup, but what we really need right now is there's a lot of data getting pulled in a lot of days more so than I want to actually look at. So I'm going to add a slicer. I'm going to drag the date column into my slicer and this is just a filter, right? And it already gave me the slider format. If it doesn't give you the slider format, you can go in here into the slicer settings and you can select what kind of slicer you want. And I'm actually just going to drag this thing all the way over into uh, let's go kind of into February, a couple months back. And that is going to limit my date range here on my visuals. Next thing I want to do is a simple bar chart. I want to see the amount of volume that's getting traded on NVIDIA stock every day. So I'm going to drag in the date field and then I'm going to drag in the volume. And what's nice about this API data is they're feeding you data in the way that kind of an end user wants to see it. I'm not having to make any crazy measures here to get these charts the way I want them to look. So here's the volume data. Looks like on March 8th, there was way more than usual volume. Over 100 million shares were exchanged. And that was a big drawdown day for NVIDIA, so a big sell-off. So that's our NVIDIA data, our publicly traded equity. Of course, we could do that with any stock, with any ticker we have. Now let's go over into our Bitcoin pricing. And this should be a little faster because we already learned how the API query is working to pull this data. So it's pretty much the exact same query with the same steps that I already walked through, except we need to make sure that the function we're feeding it is for that Bitcoin query. So digital currency daily instead of time series daily, which is what we had on the NVIDIA query. 
and let's walk down to the API URL with parameters. So this looks exactly the same as the URL we had before. So function is digital currency daily, symbol is BTC, you know, we could pull Ethereum or whatever else. Market, we want it quoted in US dollar terms. So you could change that if you're somewhere else in the world. And then that same API key. So Alpha Vantage knows it's us. And then these same exact steps. It comes in as JSON. We turn it into a table so that we're comfortable with it. Do a couple other steps like change the type, make sure it comes through as numbers. And we get the open, the high of the day, and the low of the day, as well as the volume traded. So that is the Bitcoin data. And just because we're already in Power Query, in the interest of time, I'm gonna walk through the natural gas. This is the front month Henry Hub futures. So the function itself is called natural gas and interval, you could do weekly, we're doing daily, same URL key. And this one, because it's a little more simple of a query, it's just giving us that that one it's either the open or the close. I'm not actually I'm not actually entirely sure, but it's giving us that value for that day. And we're doing the same steps. Close those up. And just like we saw in the relationships before, we're related on date, so we can use that single date column. And for these two guys, I'm going to go ultra simple. I'm going to do a line chart. Of course, our familiar date column there on the x-axis and then for natural gas let's bring in value and put it on the y-axis and we have a very simple line chart and of course our slicer affects it as well so there was a big price blowout on one day or that could be that could be some bad data i'm not sure um but the slicer affects it as well and just to show you how simple it is to rapidly create some visualizations in Power BI. That same date column on the x-axis, let's go into our BTC prices, let's grab the open, throw it on the y-axis, and now we have the Bitcoin price chart. Let's do a little formatting and wrap this video up. Okay, so I really hope this was useful for you guys. Of course, if you get lost and, you know, if I'm not doing a great job walking us through the steps, you can always download the template for free. There's a link below. And that's going to help you just kind of stay in the guardrails. So thanks for watching. We'll have more videos like this. Make sure you uh, leave a comment and, and let me know what else you want to see. And we can cover more topics like this.